Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Welcome into your Wednesday meeting. My name is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. And uh, here we are all again. And uh, the first thing I need to say is if you are new here, if you're watching because you're questioning your drinking, if you're a little bit worried, uh, then the first thing you need to do is click that subscribe button. Uh, even if you've been here for a while, if you're sober and you've been here for a long time uh, and you're not subscribed, do it now because I noticed a shocking statistic uh, yesterday. Would you believe 44% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel? What's that all about? Subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button as well. It helps me out with YouTube. So uh, today we have an AMA. That means you can ask me anything at all. Don't hold back. Pull no punches. If you're worried about something, now is the time to get it off your chest. If you need some advice, some help, if you want to share your story, if you want to share some advice with other people, uh, then post your comments below wherever you're watching. Uh, there is no judgment here. We're all in the same boat. Every single person watching this stream uh, and on the YouTube channel uh, have worried about the same thing that you worry about. So there's no judgment at all here. Uh, any judgment will be banned. So before we get into today's subject and your questions, and before uh, AMA stands for Ask Me Anything, or Q&A if you prefer. Sorry, there was a question from KB saying, what does AMA mean? Uh, before we get into the, the subject and your questions, uh, just a little housekeeping. Uh, I've just been trying to change things around a little bit. Um, I have a problem, uh, and I mentioned this yesterday in the video, that I live in a very nice part of the world. Uh, it's very sunny very blue near the sea and it's lovely, but unfortunately nobody else on planet Earth lives here. Um, the rest of the world lives somewhere else. I'm in the worst time zone possible <laughs> for doing this sort of stuff. It's four o'clock in the afternoon here for me. I'm guessing it's not where you are because virtually nobody lives in this time zone. So what I'm gonna do, instead of doing three of these AMAs, uh, which lands pretty awkwardly for a lot of people, I'm gonna do uh, daily videos. And I'm gonna make them available on a daily basis at um, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you should get a new video most days, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we'll do the live stream on a Wednesday, which will be at the same time, which will be 2 p.m. Uh, GMT UTC, 4 p.m. here in Cyprus for all my thousands of Cyprus viewers. So I hope that's okay, I hope that works. Um, let's say hello to a few people. Um, the gang are in, we've got Doreen here, KB, good morning. Uh, we have Tracy saying good morning to everyone. Slavi is here. Uh, Maureen, good morning, uh, Maureen. Tracy is here. Rhubarb, uh, you aren't live today, are you? I am live. I am live, Rhubarb, don't worry. Uh, Garp is here from North Carolina. What else have we got? Uh, Owen is here. Christine, uh, on my way to see my sister for an alcohol-free get-together. Uh, it's going to be dodgy. Really? Why? Tell me why. Uh, what was that there from Andor? Uh, hi, Craig. Found you three years ago. Still going strong. 19th of Feb. Hitting three years sober. Fantastic, Andor. Uh, Andor Kranenberg. Where are you in the world? Um, Todd Parker is here saying hello. Dennis, awesome to meet you. Hi, Dennis. Welcome. Croft is here as well. We've got Dean on board. Uh, James with a question there. We'll talk about that later. Dorian is here. Good morning, Joan. David from Canvas, uh, Kansas. Uh, Jennifer is here. Good morning, Jennifer. Uh, ABC. Uh, Jean is here as well. And oh, the Netherlands. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Um, and uh, Solonika Chapman from Texas. Good. All right. I like Texas. I think Austin might be my favorite part of Texas. All right, so I just wanted to talk briefly about uh, an article I posted up on the, the new website today. Um, it's under articles, and it's entitled, Are You Ready for a Life Without Alcohol? Uh, and the, it might sound like a strange statement to make, but I think if you're just if you're here and you're just at the start of this journey, you're at the point where you're questioning your drinking, and you've, you've, you kind of know that it's time to stop. I think the secret to making this easy, to making sobriety a simple process rather than a struggle and a battle, is good planning and good preparation. 
It's to be prepared for what life is going to be like and to be prepared for the obstacles that are going to come up ahead of time. Because really, it's the obstacles in life that are going to trip you up. They're going to send you into relapse. So if you can get as well prepared in advance as you can before you start this journey, you're making everything a lot easier. I think this, you know, this journey starts with the right mindset. And so the worst mindset you can have going into this is the victim mindset. And I cannot, I, I'm not a very sympathetic therapist. I'm not going to give you a lot of sympathy. <laughs> it's just not my style. I'll give you a lot of empathy because I know how you feel, but I'm never going to be that sort of coach who says, oh, there, there, bless, never mind. It's not your fault because that doesn't serve you. And I see a lot of victim mentality out there. You know, I was looking at YouTube earlier and some of the comments from past videos and someone was posting saying, uh, I've tried everything. Nothing works for me. I'm completely lost. As long as you maintain that mindset, nothing will ever get better. You will, con you will stay trapped in that position that you have declared to be the truth. And it's not the truth. It's, you know, it's like we talked about with Andrew the other day. It is purely your mental creation. You've created a universe in your mind where it's impossible to stop drinking and it feels real and believable. If you are currently in victim mindset, then you need to give yourself a good slap about the face and snap out of it. Uh, and I'm not, I'm, I know I'm not being very nice about that, but I have to be blunt here. You're not going to make any progress until you have a serious word with yourself and say, enough, enough. I'm going to deal with this. How do you know if you're in victim mindset? If I say to you, why do you drink alcohol and you have an answer ready to go? That's a victim mindset. If you can defend your drinking instantly. So you might say to me, well, Craig, you know, it's not my fault. I'm in a, a very um, toxic relationship. Craig, it's not my fault. You know, I work a very stressful job. Uh, I get home and I'm exhausted and I just need to let the pressure off and so on and so on. All very valid excuses, but excuses won't get you sobriety. Excuses will get you pity. Now, if you want to have a pity party, it's the wrong channel. We don't do pity parties here. All right. So snapping out of victim mentality, job number one. Understanding there's nothing wrong with you. You're not a bad person. You're not weak. You're not broken. Despite all the stigma and nonsense around this drug, there is nothing at all wrong with you. You drank a highly addictive substance and you got addicted. You got addicted. Nothing weird happened there. The purely logical conclusion of your actions was borne out. There's nothing wrong with you. And you can fix this. So first, then we move on to, you know, how are you going to do this? If your way of approaching this involves willpower, and I mean by that, right, Monday, I'm stopping drinking, I'm going cold turkey, and I'm going to be a good boy, I'm going to be a good girl, and I'm not going to drink again, you've got a 95% chance of failure. This is what I talk about in my course all the time, all right? Don't use willpower. There is no power in willpower. Full stop. You need to make a decision. Are you cutting down or are you stopping completely? I'm never going to say to you, you must stop completely. I hope when I show you the truth, when I reveal the illusion and how the trick is being performed, you will come to the logical conclusion that you don't want to drink any of that attractively packaged poison. But I'm never going to force that on you. That is your decision to make. But you need to go into this with an idea. What are you doing? Are you giving up forever? You're giving up for a month? Are you cutting down? What, what, is, your, what is your plan? Clarity is important, I think. How are you going to deal with cravings? Because if you don't have a plan, there's a chance the clown will get to you at that moment. Have a plan on how you're going to deal with the, the cravings. What are you going to replace the alcohol with? And that's a really important point. If you're thinking of stopping drinking and you have no plan to replace the alcohol with something else, you're going to create a vacuum. And that vacuum is going to bite you on the ass. You'll be sitting alone on your sofa one night, bored out of your brains with six hours ahead of you before bedtime. And you'll think, oh, I'll just have a glass of wine. So you better make sure that you've replaced that alcohol with something positive, something that you're passionate about, something that keeps you busy, especially for the first month of sobriety. 
And then also we talk about how you deal with friends and family. Are you prepared for your drinking buddies to tell you that you've changed? You're not as much fun as you used to be? That you're, you know, you're the party pooper? How are you going to deal with your family on your birthday, pushing a glass of champagne into your hand? These are all things you need to think about. These are all things we talk about in the course as well. So planning and preparation, I believe they're the secret to making sobriety easy. And if you hadn't thought about it, just give it a little bit of thought, no matter where you are on the journey. Okay, hope that helps. All righty. <laughs> um, so AMA, ask me anything. Questions, questions. We will go on as long as the questions continue. When they dry up, I will say bye-bye. Uh, so I'm here as long as you need me to be, all right? Um, let's say, let's see who we missed here. Uh, Alex, Alex is six years with no alcohol. Feels great. What's the secret, Alex? How do you stay sober for six years? What's, what's if you could put it into one sentence, what would it be? Uh, Carla is in Westport. Welcome, Carla. Um, Kev Jackson, Vietnam. Very nice. That's uh, not sure we've ever had someone from Vietnam watching. Well, nobody spoke up. I'm sure we have. Um, let's have a look. Christine S. We're both 20 days alcohol free, so it's going to be a test. Ah. So you're both doing the sober thing. You're meeting up for a sober get together and you're both sober. OK, that's not that's that's not the worst situation to be in, is it? If, if she was still, you know, an avid drinker. Um, then you've got a, a bit of a challenge, haven't you? Because she's going to try and twist your arm. You, you can, you know, it's all about mindset, isn't it? If you both go into this with the mindset, we're supporting each other. Even if you have to have a little frank conversation, you know, and maybe you already have, and you say to each other, look, no matter how much fun we're having, no matter how, you know, relaxed we feel, let's just make sure we look after each other, eh? Just so, you know, you get through these these crucial points because 20 days is a pivotal point, isn't it? You're not so far into sobriety where you're a hundred percent comfortable, but at least you're outside the kick. So don't spoil it by a bit of, you know, frivolous stuff that didn't need to happen is what I'd say. Rick is here. Hey dude, thanks for all the great advice. You're very welcome, Rick. Uh, Kevin McBroom. Uh, good morning from Virginia. Morning, Kevin. Um, Alex says, you'll lose some of your friends because you don't drink anymore. It is true. You will. Um, but actually, it's not really a bad thing because they, re they weren't really your friends to begin with. They, they appeared to be, but they only liked you because you used the same drug as them and you gave them social proof, which is a very powerful human motivator. Um, look, on, look on sobriety as a really good true test filter for your friends. At the end of this sobriety game, you're going to find you have quite a few less friends on your Facebook list, but the quality will have increased significantly. Slavi, uh, thank you for starting with not being a victim. Outstanding, Craig. I love that. <laughs> my kids hate this, you know. Whenever my kids um, have get into trouble, I can't help it. I hear, I hear them complaining, saying, oh, dad, it's terrible. This has happened and that has happened. And I said, stop being a victim. They go nuts. That's not helpful, dad. <laughs> and I know it's not, but I just can't stand victim mentality because it gets you nowhere. Dust yourself down and start fighting. That's the only way to success. And that's not just about drinking. That's everything in life. It's about refusing to stay down on the mat, getting up no matter how hard you get hit. That's what it's all about. JR, we're born ready. We are. We are born without any limitations. You know, we come into this world, don't we? And anything is possible. We could be an astronaut. We could be the prime minister. We could be the president. Anything is possible. The only thing that stops us is our self-imposed limitations. Tracy, I totally need your brutal honesty. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's completely inappropriate and wrong. Uh, and, you know, I've been in many situations in my life where I've approached people in, in, you know, times of need, when they've been in times of need, and I've thought to myself, okay, what would work with me? 
if I was where they were now, what would work with me? And generally, nine out of 10 times with me, it's a good slap about the face, you know, metaphorically, you know, it's a pull yourself together, crack on. That would work with me. But I, I have found uh, to my peril that it doesn't work with everyone. And sometimes it <laughs> makes it worse. So, but that's kind of what you get from me, I'm afraid. Um, Lord Farquhar, I went 30 days and slipped up. What caused you to slip up? What happened? How did he get you? What did he say to you that uh, that made you go back? That would be interesting to know. Also, it's a valuable lesson for you, you know, how not to respond in the future to that same thing. Uh, Leslie's in Arizona. Thank you. Welcome, Leslie. Rhubarb, we're all victims of traditions passed uh, from generation to generation. Yeah, we are. Um, but you, you, you can choose not to be, can't you? You know, we... You know, we, we're taught things through life, um, especially around alcohol. You know, when somebody has a, ba a, a baby, what do you do? You celebrate with champagne, don't you? you? You have a party. When you have a birthday, what do you do? You celebrate. You get out the alcohol. What do you do at Christmas? You drink different types of drinks. You have the eggnog and the port and the sherries and all that come out, don't they? What happens when someone dies? You have a little party, don't you? And everyone drinks. They're the traditions with alcohol that have been passed on to us. And we just pick up the chalice and run with it. Uh, and our children's what they watch us and they think, oh, one day I'll be able to have, you know, the, I'll be able to join in with this special occasion and have the magic liquid that I'm not allowed now. So, yeah, there are traditions that have the potential to turn us into victims. But your, your own self-awareness uh, and self-choice can get around that. You can look at that and say, I'm, no, no, I'm breaking the cycle. I'm not having that. Um, and you think about, you know, history as a society, there are things that used to happen years ago that were tradition that seemed like they'd always be a part of society and are now just seem, you know, they're unacceptable. And they're probably more noticeable when you look at countries that do things because of tradition that they really should have let go. Like in Spain, you know, they do the bullfighting. It's barbaric. It's hideous. Uh, you know, and the, and the strongest defense for them to continue doing it is it's tradition. Yeah, Slave, slavery was a tradition. Does that mean we should continue having slaves continue a slave trade? It's not justifiable. What else we got here? Um, Slavi, the problem with a pity party is that very few people turn up and they don't bring presents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. They're not a very popular thing, are they? Uh, unless you're having it on uh, Facebook, throw a pity party for yourself on Facebook and they, oh, your friends will love it. You'll get so many comments. Hey, hon, you okay? What's up? They, they don't care about you. They're just cruising for gossip. They're reveling in your misery. Don't forget that saying. Don't share your, um, don't share your bad news and bad fortune and problems on social media. Because half your friends don't care and the other half are glad that you've got them. Um, Owen, Owen McGrandles, my intention is to give up permanently. I had three runs at it last year. I fell off the wagon at five weeks twice and six weeks, six weeks once. Currently 32 days, 32 days sober and back in that danger zone. Okay. Uh, again, Owen, what tripped you up? What happened at that time? Um, I mean, it could be that you know, I, I always say it's not about giving up alcohol. It's about falling in love with sober. Because if you, if you build this journey on how much you hate alcohol and how it makes you feel, eventually you're going to get far enough away from that period of your life that you can no longer really feel it. You can probably remember it, but you can no longer feel the emotions that were attached to it. And so therefore, your leverage just got really weak. It doesn't hurt you anymore. And so you haven't got as much power to control your mindset. Whereas if you're always in a constant state of gratitude for sobriety, if you're always thinking, wow, I love being sober. I love how I feel. I love how much energy I've got and so on and so on. Then you're always in a positive frame of mind, if that makes sense. Uh, Chris Ball. Hi, Craig. Nearly 14 months sober, and the evil clown is very active, especially Saturday and Sundays. I'm confident I have it under control. Just don't listen to those five words. The five most dangerous words on planet Earth are? 
in the comments below. Go on, let's see who we can get up there first. Who's first with the five most dangerous words on planet Earth? Why Saturdays and Sundays? Are you alone? Are you with friends? What's the trigger there? Um, let's have a look. Andor says, mindset, exclamation mark. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Wow, James. Wow. 30 years sober, really? One day at a time? That's awesome. You Just so much respect for you. 30 years, such a commitment. Um, Banzai, I've cut way back on my drinking from 13 to 15. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I thought, that. I thought, whoa. You've got this wrong. You've gone up from 13 to 15 beers a night to four or five a night. Do you think that's a prerequisite for actually quitting? Um, why did you want to cut back? The reasons for, for cutting back are probably the same reasons why you'd quit, yeah? Um, you know, I always say that if you want to hear the truth, change the drug. So Banzai, imagine I, I've come to you and I've said to you, listen, I, I used to have a really big problem with heroin. Um, I was doing heroin seven days a week. Uh, I managed to cut it back to two days a week. Do you think that's okay? You wouldn't say, yeah, Craig, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, carry on. Well done. Brilliant. Yeah, you've got this nail. That sounds healthy. You wouldn't say that, would you? You'd go, okay, good going. Maybe you should take it out the other two days as well and get it completely out of your life. And I know people will say, but hang on a minute, Craig, there's, there's no comparison between heroin and alcohol. Well, there kind of is. You know, alcohol kills, what, three million people a year. Heroin kills a couple of hundred thousand people a year. Which one's the more evil? It seems obvious to me, but, you know, the media and the bubble of unreality we live in around this drug says... Heroin is more evil than alcohol. Not really. Not really. Um, Kev says, uh, oh, I need to get rid of that first, Kev. Uh, lots of alcohol abuse, uh, expats in Vietnam and local, local Viets also, uh, cheap booze and no uh, drunk driving laws. Yeah. The roads are a bit treacherous there, I think, aren't they? Those little uh, scooters going everywhere. Um, it's difficult to know how it could be made worse by them being drunk, really. <laughs> um, Banzai, I decided to cut back because my brain was dizzy all the time, even when sober. Yeah. Look, it destroys your brain cells. Uh, you know, if you drink long enough, you'll start presenting symptoms that look like Alzheimer's. Uh, because you, you, alcohol has destroyed enough of your brain cells that you struggle to form short-term memories. So if you care about maintaining your mental faculty and, and having clarity, then removing the poison from your life is, is an essential thing, really. Um, KB, Christine, my sister, and I just did this. It went fine. We planned ahead to have alcohol-free activities. Yeah, planning is what it's all about, being prepared. Um, Dennis, after the decision, even a hard road, there is a simple answer to staying consistently committed in replacing my habit anchors to tight habits, raising up. Okay. That sounds very um, spiritual. Uh, N, what is it about that beautiful, nostalgic, tragic headspace we put ourselves in when drinking? It's like we're pretending we're in some sort of passionate, romantic uh, we are some sort of passionate romantic, especially when drinking alone. Uh, because it, it distorts your your mental faculties, doesn't it? You know, it's it's not real. And that's part of the attraction for people. You know, a lot of people are drinking to escape reality because their life sucks or something about their life sucks. And here's this substance that can make you pretend that your life is not, is different. You're in a different place and different things exist but it's not it's not real is it it's an illusion and it and while it's busy keeping you distracted with the illusion it's busy smashing up your life the the real life that you're not aware of it's a sleight of hand you're being robbed you're being robbed of the gift of life by living in an illusion 
uh, Dorian, three years sober so far. Nice. However, next month I'm going to Benidorm with some friends. They like to eat, drink, and party. It's going to be a test for me. Uh, Benidorm in March. Do people go to Benidorm in March? Isn't it cold? Um, yeah. It's a weird one, that Dorian, because I tell you what, when I was drinking, I used to go maybe once a month, I used to go to Blackpool uh, drinking. Now, if anyone's in the Eng in England watching, they'll know what Blackpool's like. It's like Benidorm in Spain. It's a party town. It's carnage. It's like Iron Appa in Cyprus. It's just alcohol everywhere, vomit everywhere. Uh, you know, you can imagine. Um and I, I went a few times after I stopped drinking, and it is the most surreal experience that you will ever go through. It's like going to a different planet, being in Blackpool on a Saturday night sober. Or try it. You know, go to Benidorm sober. You will, you'll be shocked at what you see. You will think, are these humans? You will see women lying in the gutter, giggling, and, and you'll be thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> Get up. What, what are you, why are you doing that? It's just the weirdest experiment ever. Just a, a little warning to you. It grows quite tiresome quite quickly. So just be prepared. All right. Don't, uh, I would make sure that you have a couple of nights of, you know, escape from the, the nonsense. Otherwise your brain's going to fry. Uh, Holly, how do you stop drinking after experiencing a traumatic event? Just get professional help. Well, you should always get professional help. You know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not here to give medical advice. And so I don't know how much you're drinking, to what extent, etc. cetera. Um, I think the, the problem here is uh, you can't put the two things together. It's not like I've had a traumatic event, so now I drink. They're two different things. Because I'm as sure as night follows day that the alcohol is making your traumatic event worse. For example, grief. Uh, the grieving process is a set process, and it has a duration that is unique to you. Some people can get over grief in weeks, a month. Some people are grieving for years. Depending on who has died and how they fit into your life, you will have to go through a period of grief that you don't know the duration of. And it's not pleasant but you have to go through it and it hurts. And it's that pain that teaches your subconscious mind to accept it and to make sense of it, to apply order to chaos, yeah? The only thing I can tell you is if you drink alcohol, you will extend that period of grief massively because you are preventing your subconscious mind from applying order to chaos. And your subconscious mind will not rest until it can put what's happened in a box, label it and say, okay, I've made peace with that. Really important. As long as you keep drinking, you are preventing your mind from healing what has happened to you. So you've got to separate the two things. Get the alcohol out of your life and then get some help with the trauma that happened to you. But the two things are not joined together. Does that make sense, Holly? Thank you. Um, Joe. Joe Hume, piano music. I relapsed once in eight months because I romanticize about the good times. I soon found out the next morning why I quit and I made a video for myself explaining this. Perfect. Yeah. Because this is what happens, you know, after a while you start, you look back and it's like the, the bad times, the, the times you let people down, the regret, you've repressed those, you've pushed those to the back of your mind, you've forgotten about them. But then you remember the, the your old friends, old relationships, when times when you were younger and had a laugh and you were carefree and it, it, they were connected to alcohol and the evil clown goes, aha, I think we can get him on this one. Alexander, hello, Craig. Greetings from Mexico. Never been to Mexico. Would love to. Um, uh, rhubarb, exactly. And people should recognize these bad traditions. You are quite right. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, Dlaxigo, is that right? Am I saying that right? Uh, I'm guessing that's an East European name. Sounds quite Slavic. Am I wrong? Am I right? Uh, two years, thanks to you. Uh, oh, <laughs> you even tell me where you're from, Poland. Okay. 
Uh, now a fear of war reminds me of alcohol. I'm from Poland, but I'm aware alcohol will make me want make. But I'm aware alcohol won't make me a better soldier. But fear, hard to live with. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know it's escaping that reality, isn't it? Um, there's always there's that good advice from Eckhart Tolle, isn't there? That you should stay out of the future. Um, if you want to be scared, live in the future. If you want to be sad, live in the past. If you want to be present, live in, in the moment, live live now. But it's it's wise words, hard to follow. Um, Alexander, thank you for all your incredible advice. This way in living have helped me not step on the wagon for quite some time. Thank you, Alexander. Good. Uh, Paul is here. Hi, Paul. Welcome on board. Francis. Yes, I'm in love with sobriety. Every day feels like a gift. Thank you, Craig. Kev Jackson is first with the five words, the five most dangerous words on planet Earth. Just one drink won't hurt. Just one drink won't hurt. If you ever hear yourself saying that to yourself or saying it out loud, punch yourself in the face as hard as you can because that's the last thing you're going to hear before something very bad happens to you. Kevin was second. Just one drink won't hurt. Yeah. Oh, KB was in there as well. Oh, and everyone was on it now. Right. Um, Owen, thank you. Doing a 50K February challenge this time around to help myself and others. 50K February. What is that? You're running 50,000 miles? Um, Slavi, uh, with a quote from Tony Robbins. If you can just divorce the story of your limitations and marry the truth of your unlimited capacity, then the whole world changes. Yeah. You know, Tony Robbins is the master of what a positive mindset can do. I mean, he came from nothing, and now he's a billionaire that flies jet helicopters around. He, you know, he, he wasn't born into wealth. He just created it for himself. And I think, you know, for that reason alone, he's an inspirational character. Um, JR, thank you for your super sticker, 55. Um, lethal Habit, hey, Craig from Ohio. First time I've caught you live. Welcome in. You're very welcome here. Matt, can drinking every day cause a fat and puffy face even if you're skinny? Yes, because alcohol causes inflammation. Uh, it causes um, lots of skin problems. If you have... Um, psoriasis for example alcohol will make it worse basically alcohol causes inflammation wherever it touches now your body's quite tough and you know you don't blow up like a balloon the moment you drink some alcohol but if you personally have some susceptibilities or you have some health weaknesses then alcohol is going to aggravate it so if you have you know people ask me all the time does alcohol cause gout does alcohol cause diabetes does alcohol cause you know arthritis and the answer I always think is, I don't think it causes it, but it doesn't help it. It probably aggravates it, probably makes it flare up. So if you have those things, if you have a problem, then alcohol is certainly going to cause you more issues. <laughs> Brad, I hate when drinkers say, I don't trust people who don't drink. That make, What does that even mean? Makes no sense at all. Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's If you think about it from outside the bubble, you don't trust people who choose not to drink poison every day. But you do trust people who think that drinking poison every day is a good idea. What does that say about you? It says nothing about me. Uh, do you have a video that would be good for teen... Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. Do you have a video that would be good for teenagers? Do teenagers listen? Is there, is there any point in making a video? Um I'll just make, a, make one now that says, I told you so. And you can play it to them when they're 20. How about that? Uh, no, seriously. Um, I, it depends, really, what you're gonna, why you want it. If, if you're going to sit your teenagers down and force them to watch it, I, I don't think it's going to do anything at all. They'll just ignore it. Um, if they come asking for it, then that's a different story. I think better to, with, with impressionable teenagers, it's better to lead by example than to dictate um how they should live their life 
because uh, I used to do pretty much everything the opposite of what my dad told me to do. It would irritate me that he was always right in the end. Um, but I just I just wanted to do it myself, and I'm sure that's true of all teenagers. Lethal habit. How do I keep my wife confident that I'm trying to get help and get better? The only way you can do it, lethal habit, is by consistency in, what, in your actions, is by demonstrating. Um, because, you know, at the moment you're the boy who cried wolf, aren't you? You, I, I'm, I don't know you and I don't know your situation, but I bet you've said to your wife dozens, if not hundreds of times, don't worry, I'll get this sorted or I'll not do that again or I'm really sorry, I'll, I'll make sure that won't happen again. You will have given her apologies and promises in the past and you've let her down every single time. So you have to be realistic about this. To her at the moment, when it comes to alcohol, your words mean very little. You know, it's, it's like listening to a politician. It's meaningless what what you say and that's frustrating for you because i'm sure in your heart right now where you are you are 100 percent committed to this uh, unfortunately the only way to prove to her the direction you're going in is by doing it repeatedly without fail and that just that puts a bit of pressure on your shoulders but it's the only thing that's going to work really sorry it's probably not the answer you wanted is it uh, Banzai, can the brain recover from damage caused by alcohol? I've started taking DHA along with some vitamins for the brain. I've also changed my diet uh, to foods that greatly benefit the brain. I think to a certain extent, yes. Um, I'm not a doctor, uh, but, you know, uh, one of the things we know about people who drink alcohol to excess is they have a B vitamin deficiency. Uh, and in the most extreme cases, this can present itself as um, something called wet, wet brain syndrome, uh, which gives the appearance of um, Alzheimer's. You know, uh, they, they, people can slur their words, forget words, speak gibberish. And this, this is caused by a chronic um, vitamin, uh, vitamin B, B deficiency. Uh, when you get to the point where you are uh, diagnosed with alcoholic wet brain, over-the-counter tablets are not going to be enough for you. You need to go into hospital and be put on a intensive uh, vitamin drip uh, to get your levels back up. Uh, and we know that if you're treated in that way, then your mental faculty will improve once the deficiency is rectified. So to a certain extent, in certain situations, yes, you can repair the damage. Uh, the best thing to do is not do any more damage. Because once a brain cell is dead, it's dead. It's, there's no way to bring it back. It's not like the liver. It doesn't regenerate. You just slowly lose brain power over your lifetime, and alcohol massively accelerates that process. So stop drinking now so you don't do any more damage. Eat the good stuff. Take the supplements. Give yourself the best chance of having mental faculty well into your old age. Uh, Ed. Ed is 11 days sober. Congratulations, Ed. Well done. Um, Christine says, Benidorm in March is cold. It must be cheap then. Is that why you're going? Why, why would you go to Benidorm in March? Uh, mind you, there's no benefit in going in August. It's carnage in August, isn't it? Um, let's see what we got here. James... No opinion on dual addictions, booze and weed. Uh, well, no, it's not that I don't have opinions. It's just all addictions, are, I believe, are covering up for something else. Um, so, I mean, I would deal with one at a time. Otherwise, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. So I would never advise someone really to quit smoking and quit drinking at the same time or quit weed and alcohol at the same time or even go on a diet and quit alcohol at the same time. It's you're overloading your, you know, the things you've got to worry about. Um, always get rid of the alcohol first because the alcohol is distorting your perceptions and changing the way you view the world. Once you can get outside the bubble of unreality that is alcohol, you will see the other areas of your life that need work in a much clearer and much easier to deal with mentality. As long as the alcohol's there, 
it kind of paralyzes you. You're ineffective as a human being. You can't problem solve. You can't come up with solutions. You can't be creative when alcohol is in your head. So get that out first and then deal with your other problems. Uh, Jennifer Johnson, thank you for advice on the grief process. You're very welcome. Uh, <laughs> Owen says the Poles have vodka with Weetabix. <laughs> Only kidding, bud. Yeah. I'm not sure that's true, though, you know. It's a bit of a stereotype, isn't it? Uh, good morning, O'Neill from uh, USA. Good morning. Welcome on in. Um, ah, okay. O Owen said he was doing the 50K February. I thought it meant 50,000, 50 kilometers. Got you, got you. Uh, Ecoster. I started drinking at 13, currently 57. I've been hangoverless for 40 days. That's excellent. 13 to 57 and then sobriety. How does that feel? Johnny Cola, did you find that you could slow down when extremely hungover? How do you mean? Explain, give me some more detail on that, Johnny. Um, UFO Nut, good morning from New York. Uh, Von, greetings from Finland. Keep up the good work. You've been a big help to me. Thank you. Uh, Bob, you have a friend in the Ecosta, 40 days too. Well done. Um, UFO Nut says, I've just referred a friend to your channel. Hope it helps them. I've had the mindset shift. Two and a half years sober now, feeling better than ever. Thanks. Well done. Two and a half years is awesome. Uh, Garp says, only 36 hours, but I'm working on getting a good mindset. Good. Keep going, Garp, and keep coming back. Keep coming to these meetings. Keep watching the videos. Remember, keep sobriety a part of your daily routine. Uh, Deanna, uh, 4.5 years since I watched your first video. Quit that day. I still watch to remind myself because sometimes I think one drink won't hurt me. And then I remember your words. I hope you punch yourself in the face. That's the law. <laughs> Only joking. Um... Owen says, thiamine hydrochloride is what I'm taking at the moment. I'm not sure how much that works. Uh, so I'm guessing that's, uh, thiamine's a B, B vitamin, isn't it? Is that prescribed to you or you buy that over the counter, Owen? Hey, Leon, welcome in. Um, Dr. Danger walked right past the bars after my gig downtown last night. It wasn't that hard not to go inside. One week completely sober today. Fantastic. What sort of music do you play, Dr. J Danger? Uh, because is it country? It looks like you've got a kind of country top on there. If it's country, I need to come and see you play. Nashville, probably my favorite town in America. Love Nashville. There's no coincidence that we've done several quit drinking boot camps in Nashville. Um, let me see. If I drink a bottle of vodka a week, am I an alcoholic? Right. Uh, whether, you're, whether you have a problem with alcohol or not has nothing to do with the quantity or frequency of your drinking. Um, you can drink one glass of wine a week and have a problem with alcohol. It's not, it's not about the quantity, because if you, if you make this about the quantity, then you're always going to compare your drinking to other people, and you're always going to be able to find other people who drink more than you. So you're always going to have this confirmation bias that my drinking is not so bad because Dave drinks more, or because Steve drinks double. You see what I mean? So you're always going to be able to compare. Here's the question you need to ask yourself if you need to decide if you have a problem with alcohol. Does it make you miserable? Are you sick of it? If your alcohol consumption, when you think about it in the cold light of day, makes you sad, makes you miserable, you have a problem. That's it. You know, I think I've told this story many times at San Francisco boot camp. Uh, a guy came 70 years old 
went around the room and asked everyone, how, much, you know, how often do you drink? How much do you drink? This guy stood up. He said, I drink one miniature of vodka a day. I said, are you sure you're in the right room? He said, no, 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 Craig, you don't understand. I've done it for 40 years and I hate it. I hate it because I have to do it. It's impossible for me not to do it. And I hate that. So here's this guy and he traveled, I think, a thousand miles to be at the conference because he was drinking one bottle, one miniature, five ml or something of uh, vodka a day. So it's not about the quantity. Uh, Leon, quit for 14 months because of your videos and book, March 2020. Uh, March 8th, stumbled in 2021. Um, oh, sorry, March 2020. Uh, stumbled in 2021. Been in the low since. Need help. Yeah, Leon, you know, that one-year anniversary, it is a stumble point. Um, I always tell people who email me that, you know, I sometimes get emails of people saying, hey, Craig, I'm six months sober. I've never felt better. Hey, Craig, I'm nine months sober. Never felt better. I, I suppose they're expecting me to come back with, hey, well done you. And they do get that. But there's always a PS. And the PS is just a little heads up. You're approaching a a little moment in time where the evil clown is going to seize and put your rose tinted glasses on. Uh, and I think it's because you quit so easily when you had that mindset shift, you get about a year out and you start thinking, well, you know, I could just have one because I quit so easy last time. Hey, I'll just do it again. It's 10 times harder the second time you have to do it. Um, the main thing is not to throw the baby out with the bathwater, is not to assume that everything you did before is now a failure and won't work because you you know you failed and you drank. It's just it's a flare up. You know, this this thing in your life is always going to be there to a certain extent. And sometimes you're going to have a flare up. You know, so and you hear about you know people are going going 20 years and then relapsing. The thing to do is not to give it more power than it deserves. Don't throw everything away just because you you know you had a slip up. The um, the thing to do now, Leon, is to draw a line in the sand and say enough. That's it. Enough. I've had it now. I've had enough of my you know my relapse. I've I've gone through that. Now let's start again. Starting today, I'm back on track. Uh, you may need to do something different just to give yourself an extra kick. Find another approach just to give you a bit of extra ammunition. Um, you can even try, you know, you could even try some prescription medication if you think that would help you just get back on the right path. And, you know, I'm not a massive advocate of prescription meds for drinking, as you know, but it seems you're, you're, you're in a bad place and you need to do something. You know, maybe you could get, you know, get some naltrexone on prescription and get some supervision from a doctor. You could get that some anti-abuse and get some supervision from a doctor just to get you back on the straight and narrow, maybe. It's something to consider. Um, Dorian says, Benidorm has a good weather the whole year. It's not like summer, but usually it's great. They say it has a microclimate. Okay. It must be 20 years since I've been to Benidorm, uh, Dorian. Um, uh, let's have a look. Matt, sorry for another question, but can you give some tips on how to deal with this kick you often talk about? This mild, anxious feeling is annoying. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, well, you know, I, in the course, uh, I talk about the four things. So if you haven't done the course, uh, it's worth looking into. If you go to my website now, stopdrinkingexpert.com, you can sign up for the webinar today. It'll explain how the course works. Um, basically, there are two sections of, of quitting alcohol. There's the kick, which is the physical effect of the drug on your system. And then after that, you've got the psychological effect of the drug, that basically how you've conditioned yourself to live with alcohol in your life. So the first 14, 15 days, you're in the kick. And you just need to understand, you know, half of this battle is knowledge. Knowledge is power in this, this case, that the kick is going to get slowly weaker every day that you're in it. So just reassure yourself that if it feels bad today, it will feel a little bit less bad tomorrow. And then if you can't cope with the cravings, that kick sensation, then do the four things. And the four things are glass of water. I know it sounds like 
Wow. Thanks for giving us a powerful tool, Craig. But honestly, stopping what you're doing and drinking a full glass of water is, is more powerful than it appears. Second is pattern interrupt that we talk about in the course. The third is tapping therapy. And the fourth is your daily hypnosis for the first 21, 30 days of your sobriety. Okay. So there are tools to deal with this. But the most important thing is your awareness that this is the, this is the drug kicking you, hitting you with a stick to try and make you comply. Be defiant. Understand what's going on. Uh, Kunal, stop smoking expert, please, Craig. Kunal, you need to go to my YouTube channel. Uh, go to the live feed from last week. I think uh, Monday last week, Monday, yeah, Monday, I think it was, we had a stop smoking expert on as a guest called Mark Keen. So go and have a look at that video. He had some really good points. Um, let's have a look. What else we got? Uma, when do you do live streaming? Now! Uh, for those who've just joined, um, I've just changed things slightly. What I'm going to do is instead of live streaming every uh, three times a week, at this kind of set time, which is a bit awkward for a lot of people because of time zones and things. I'm going to do a live AMA or Q&A, however you want to say it, on a Wednesday at 2 p.m. UTC. Uh, that's GMT as well, 2 p.m. And then I'm going to do daily videos that will be released at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope that makes sense. Um, Post uni 10, my whole body stampers when I don't drink. I can hardly even hold the glass. But after some booze, the stammering stops. How am I to get out of this? Okay, so you you have physical withdrawal from alcohol there post uni. Um, and you need some medical help with that. Um, your doctor will be able to give you uh, some medication to help you with the withdrawal symptoms. But I'm not a doctor and I can't give you specifics on that. But if you're having a physical reaction to stopping drinking, you do need to speak to a doctor. Uh, Craig, have you ever heard of a substance called kava? Yes. It's a, um, a few years ago, it's, 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 uh, it's supposed to make you, it's supposed to reduce your cravings for alcohol, I believe is the, is the story. Uh, I'm not sure how effective it is. I'm pretty sure I tried it at some point because I tried everything. Uh, all I can tell you is it probably didn't work. Otherwise, I would have not become the stop drinking expert. I would have been, you know, <laughs> the carver expert, wouldn't I? Um, I think it's it's a herbal tablet that's got some Eastern reputation for dealing with alcohol problems, but it's all a bit vague and a bit untested. It's like people who take milk thistle to protect their liver and they think that they can take a load of milk thistle and then drink as much as they want. It's, it's not a bad theory, but the problem is most of the research done on milk thistle was done on rodents. Um, so there's been very little research done on where, how much protection it offers humans. So it's a big gamble to take to drink and take something that has very little evidence behind it. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Dr. Danger, going back out on tour this spring will be a challenge, but I think I'll be okay. I live on a friend's big ranch in Texas, so country music is good. I love country music. Uh, one of my favorite bars in all the world um, is the Broken Spoke in Austin, Texas. I wonder if it's, I, I hope it's still there. Uh, and last time I was there, I saw Dale Watson play. He's fantastic. Um... Let's have a look. Oh, Slavi says, uh, he's heard of kava. It's a root from Indonesia. The feeling is euphoric, but it attacks your kidney and livers also. No, it's not good, is it? Um, Carl T, I can stop drinking for a while, and then I start again. I've struggled with this for four years now. Uh, I suspect, Carl, you're trying to do this on your own, aren't you? And... The problem with that is 
everyone does that. You know, th this channel wouldn't exist if that worked. You know, willpower and doing it on your own has a very high chance of failure. Uh, it's important that you remove your uh, subconscious associations that this, this drug is a benefit to you. If you keep going back to drinking, then that's because you still believe at a subconscious level it's a benefit to you. And by not drinking it, you are missing out on something important. And as long as you hold that belief in your subconscious mind, you will always want to go back to drinking. The secret to long-term sobriety is to no longer believe there is any benefit to drinking poison on a daily basis. Sign up for the webinar today and have a look at the coaching program. Craig H. Keep going, everyone. I'm two years in April. Wow. Wow. Excellent. And honestly, forgot that I uh, drank until people mentioned it. Thank you, Craig. Loving the frequent content. You're very welcome. Um, Leon, back in with, uh, hi, Craig. Uh, Honored to be addressed directly by you. Great help since Boxing Day. I managed 11 days off. And then in the last three weeks, I managed two weeks. Crashed hard both times, uh, leading to self-harm. Leon, it sounds like you have... Um, you have an issue underneath the alcohol there that you're covering with the alcohol. So you probably need a two-pronged approach on this. Get the alcohol out, but don't leave yourself high and dry. And that, you know, and that it sounds like you're, you're suffering. You know, you, you're getting the alcohol out of your system and then you're just suffering for weeks until you can't bear it anymore. And then you bring him back in the alcohol because it's been proven to help. Yeah. So I would do this as a two-pronged approach. Get the alcohol out. And immediately start getting some help with the other problems you've got going in in your life. Get some therapy, get someone to talk to, uh, and attack it from two angles. It's worth a try, I think. Um, let's have a look. JR says, the only thing I regret by going sober is I should have done it sooner. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm 47, I'm 48 this year, and the, I think the one thing I regret is the amount of years I spent when I was young. You know, and they say youth is wasted on the young, don't they? The amount of years I just spent zombified, not really achieving as much as I could, you know, maybe 40% of my full capacity because I was too busy drinking poison. And now here I am, you know, 48 years old with a dodgy hip and <laughs> uh, and the body of a 48-year-old man. Wasted opportunities. Let's have a look. We're going to wrap up soon, guys, because we've done a bumper session today, new approaching an hour. Um, Craig J. Davis, uh, sober three weeks today. I can't say if I'll ever go back to boozing. I'm just taking it each day as it comes. But at the moment, I have no desire or craving to booze. I'm sick of it. It's perfect, Craig. One day at a time. Because if you make that statement, if you say, um, if you say, I'm never drinking again, that's a lot of pressure. How can you ever say you're never doing anything again? Imagine saying, I'm never eating chocolate again. It's, it's like, oh, I want chocolate immediately. Uh, Carl T, thank you. I'll sign up for your webinar. Good man. Good luck with it. Um, Slavi, thank you, Craig, for being my virtual mentor. You're very welcome, Slavi, and thanks for turning up so often. Um, Christopher Myers has some advice. Sleep as much as you can. CBD oil and magnesium uh, glycinate for the horrific anxiety. It took me two days to get out of the DT stage. Eat and drink as much as you can. Uh it's not a stereotype. Literally everyone drinks in Poland. Yeah. Uh, Bourneville. Hi, Bourneville. How's Birmingham? KB. Thank you, Craig. Kev, thanks again. Okay. So we're going to wrap up now as we're approaching exactly one hour live today. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, shocking statistic for you. 44% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. How horrendous. Click the subscribe button and uh, ring the bell so you get a notification so when you know when a new video and a new live stream is coming out if you haven't done it do it right now it would also help me a lot if you could click the like button and just post a comment below even if you just say hello and say thanks that's a big help that means youtube looks at the video and they say oh, okay people like watching this stuff and they give you more of it all right uh so thanks a lot uh well there will be a new video coming out talking about aa asking the question, does it work? 
And that will be out at, uh, well, it'll be tonight at kind of 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So watch out for that. And there will be another video tomorrow as well. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and I will speak to you very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Imagine waking up tomorrow. No hangover. No feelings of guilt or regret. Just full of energy and vitality. That goal is not only possible, it's easily achievable. Find out how 200,000 people just like you have rediscovered their happy, sober lives using the Stop Drinking Expert program. Reserve your place on today's free Quit Drinking webinar and get a copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a free gift just for turning up.